Hi. I'm recording now. I'm recording for God's sake. Why is that when I say recording? You are going to enter my next vlog. God knows. See, you people. You are going to enter my next vlog. The enemy is putting. He's just showing you the screensaver. If you ask him deep, 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 deep down, okay, why should I do this thing? You will see that he is not considering. guys welcome back again to my youtube channel thank you so much for following thank you for commenting thank you for sharing yeah you guys that share you guys are the real mvp you are the what the real mvp and yeah you deserve you deserve stand innovation thank you so much for sharing thank you for spreading the word thank you for um, um subscribing thank you for your positive comments you guys make my day i can't respond to everything but i'm grateful like i will just be go sometimes maybe life with the business or career company blah 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 is giving me so much rasbos and i just see a beautiful comment thank you thank you thank you thank you and to those of you that have been asking for mr samuel Rako, he's coming he's a guest you understand me now. The name of the channel is Tolua Sama, and I am the Tolua Sama. Therefore, enjoy. You get me? <laughs> we, we will come. He introduced himself. He said this is an investment banker. Google it. They're always busy. He won't make gun. You get. It used to take a while sometimes. So, um, I want you guys to. I, I think I'm also fun. You get like only me with the only spirits. Because it's not only me that ministry to them. Just so with you, I have a, a gazillion of angels around me and beside me. The only spirit is inside inside of me, giving me words or trans know what to say. So don't 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 look down on the Holy Spirit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I got you. Do you want to not judge the Holy Spirit now? See, I'll let you people here. You have to love me by fire by force. You must love me. You must love me. You must love me. <clears throat> If you are new here, this is how we actually always just enjoy ourselves, chickens. Please, I'm waiting for you. Just hit that subscribe button. Is you I'm waiting for? Have you hit it? Have you clicked on that subscribe button? Have you clicked or you want me to send one of the angels to come and meet you where you are? <laughs> so thank you so much for subscribing to this channel. I appreciate you guys. Um, and let me just use this time to appreciate those who comment. Um, I've forgotten the lady she's a vlogger too who actually gave me an idea for recording um better and i've taken it i've used it thank you so much i've forgotten your name um i'm grateful thank you thank you for the critical comments thank you for the positive comments everyone thank you the one that is rude me yeah, i used to delete it so today i want to talk to you about the processes or the thinking pattern that led me to the conversation we had last week last week i talked to you about the time i um those two times i wanted to kill myself i didn't try there was never an attempt and there will never be an attempt let me just put that here so that the enemy can hear and die where he is there will never be an attempt um it was just and i explained last week that it's called negotiation where the enemy begins to negotiate with you and he will never negotiate with you to favor you he will never negotiate with you something that is good he will never negotiate with you something that won't destroy your legacy or destroy the fact that you ever lived he would never do that he's not wired to consider you he's not wired to consider your purpose that's your purpose that's not why he was made he's he exists to kill to steal and to destroy i'm saying this so that no matter what the enemy is telling you to do like have sex before marriage like steal like lie against another person like bear false false witness like um, be malicious be envious be unforgiving whatever it is no matter how it looks natural the enemy is not really is not really considering you he's not considerate of you the enemy is not considerate of you your purpose your destiny your good he doesn't care so let that be your driving force in shutting him up let that be your driving force in asking god for help I just want to put that out there for somebody there. No matter what it is, maybe it's not suicide. No, maybe it's to be unruly. Maybe it's to be <clears throat> negligent of your wife, of your marriage, to sleep around even though you are married. Whatever it is that the enemy is putting, is just showing you the screensaver. So I'm talking to you today about the thoughts that led me there. It was the whole process. And understanding our triggers help us to helps us to uh, um, interrupt patterns and not repeat patterns when we understand our triggers we do not repeat patterns do you understand so that's what we want to do today we want to look into 
what led me there and i hope that this will help you also to look inwards and think not to castigate yourself not to condemn yourself but to retrain your mind to renew your mind because as christians we always need to renew our minds we always need to do that so that's what we'll be looking at today um the first time i had the suicidal thoughts was in 2015. i just finished nysc i think i finished nysc say like four or five months prior to that time and it, as much as like i said it was like christian suicide where i was praying for god to kill me but this time <clears throat> it, it had changed in a way that i was being convinced to take my own life so um and i detailed it i'm going to link it in the description box if you've not watched it however that was there was a process that led me there in 2016 i left ibadra and moved to lagos um i've been coming to lagos before then i'm from lagos state uh, <clears throat> Isaleko, to be precise but this time i knew it was different this was destiny calling me here so i moved to lagos and that was it and um i remember i think we had conversation my dad and i about job and everything yes i was coming to do my masters as well i had gotten an admission into university of lagos to study industrial and labor relations it was partial in the sense that i could go to work in the morning and then do my masters in the evening so my dad and i had conversation and there was somebody in an oil company who, who could bring me in as a contract staff and then i could work my way into being a full-time staff since i needed to do my masters on the side anyway the pay was good so my dad was working on that for me and with me i think in 2016 i still worked a bit a bit with the company that i was i had been working with since 2013 you know even while i was in school and all that i knew i had to resign from that company so i resigned in april even my dad already started but you know that these things are not cast in stone you still continue even though you are expecting something doesn't mean that you should just like stop your life and say okay i'm waiting for this so i was still working there i didn't resign but i knew that i was going to resign once that oil company job um, goes through so i went ahead did that i continued and then i resigned i remember i resigned i think april or march of 2016 i resigned and in my head i was just like ah, i need to rest because that job really tasked me however i as <clears throat> resigning i was still thinking okay you know i resigned and then i was looking forward to that job i remember that morning i was folding clothes my best friend and i were staying together in the room in house five if you don't know about house five maybe one day i'm going to do a tour of house five for you guys <laughs> we're staying together and we stayed there i was folding clothes i think i just washed and i was folding the clothes and i just heard i want to pay your salary let me pay your salary you know i bound the devil like god like, yeah, I don't want to pay myself. Oil company, oil company. You're not telling that what to hello, leave me. Oh, you know, and I was also planning for the first the first worship service I had in late we I hosted in Lagos by grace of God called my very own Alabasta. So we we were planning towards that. That was going to happen the next month, and like we couldn't pay for many things, you know. And we're all young, my twinny, my best friend, my you know, all of us are friends, we're sharp planning together. And I remember I went to see my pastor at the time. And I went to see him and I just, I, was, I went to see him about the worship service. He came, by the way. Thank you very much, Pastor Amy. He came, he came, he supported me. And I remember as I stayed in his office, I just looked around and I, said, and I just heard myself say, I want to work here. See? And they were like, oh, yes, we'll like you, we'll have you to work it. I was like, always very excited, young people and all that. See, eh, my twin looked at me like, is that, what we, is that what we plan to come and say? <laughs> is that a conversation we say we're going to come and have you? Are you, are you a joker? Asha, we talked about the event. Long story short. Okay, so I went back home and Pastor Yemi already said I should bring my CV and everything. I didn't tell my mom because it's like... At the time, she was also working in church. It's like, are you, are you a joker? Do you, do you know what you're doing? But even me, I, I, I didn't want to. I didn't want to work in church. It was, it was purely God that pushed me to work in church. Church office. And so I submitted my CV. I, I, and did the interview, I think. We did the interview and, I did the interview and next thing was, 
I was told that there was no space. I remember it was the operations pastor and head of human resource that spoke to me and said, oh, there's no, there's no space and everything I should, uh, that the body will keep me in view, blah, 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 blah. Maybe he thought that I was sad. I was very happy because it's like God, I, just, I went back home and I told God that, ah, I tried though, but you get, it didn't work. But as I, I, I remember as I made that prayer, God said, go and tell them you work for free. <laughs> Hey, hey, hey. I work for what do you call it now, God? Amy, master's degree in view. For free? For free? Are you joking? He didn't let me rest. So I went back and told him I was going to work for free. As far as Amy heard that, he was not even going to listen to human resource uh, opinion and say, like, bring her on board and we're not going to and we're going to pay her. So in 2016 I started earning 25000 there. <laughs> and it was Thankful to them because I said I was going to work for free. Do you understand? <laughs> See, I'd always known that I, mean, I, I had a different path. I, I always sensed it. But I didn't know to the extent that I was different. I didn't understand. You know, I would think it's this way or it's to this level. But God would always prove that it's not. And I always say it. My name is a trap. It's a good trap. My name is Titorua. That's this particular one is for God. That's... This one, this one that you're looking at, she belonged completely to God. So, there's nothing she want to do that God, he must sign off on it. He must sign off. Even to the YouTube videos, the topics, he always should. He's so, you know, only joke with, with me feeling his will. So, I went back and Pastor Amy said, oh, that he was, he wanted that, he was impressed. Now, the trick was how do you convince your mother uh Sammy, the ego because i just simply called my dad and i said oh don't follow through with the oil company job he my dad is a bit um i don't know how to explain he was supportive but he i could sense that he was looking at me like i'm not a normal man here but he should have said okay okay if that's what you said and that was it but my mother my mother she was in the united states that day i remember it was a facebook video call Hey, hey, you think I carried abomination and I wore it? My mother was not finding me funny. Are you joking? 25,000. I think she said, My cleaner ends 20. You that you are a master's degree older in view, you are the one that wants to be any 25. Do you, are you okay? I think before this time, <laughs> she already saw that I was taking steps that was not really attuned to. No mousy. <laughs> she already knew. Man, it's not easy being my parents. I know. I know. Because I'm it's not I'm not I'm not usual. I'm not normal. <laughs> and I remember I was telling her this is what God expects me to do now. So like I don't I don't listen to you. 25,000. First of all, you say you want to work in church office. I say no problem. I start the whole conversation. So that was for a long time, I didn't get her. And I don't blame her. I didn't get a validation in that regard. But I continued doing what God said I should do. What most people didn't know is, even as I was fighting for my place, she was not the only one. It's not just my mom, my uncles. My, you, it was like, ah, you are limiting yourself. She told you are a brilliant person. You are, you are limiting yourself. Blah, 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 blah. I just decided. But even me, I felt like I was being, I was shortchanging myself. I felt like I was settling. You know, so that phase went, I think in 2017, my mom finally just said, okay, if that's what you want to do, no problem. So 2017, I was still working in church office. I was doing a little bit, but I also knew that, you see, when you're working in church office, you have to understand the terrain that you are. You are representing the church, you understand? And people are the church and people are a bit different. They are wired differently. So, and I am, like I said, I'm different. I'm very expressive. So I would express some things. It would get to my pastor. And because he didn't want me to be seen in a light, he would call me. He started to feel like I was being boxed in. And it's not anybody's fault. Nobody can box me in now. I don't work. I don't work for church office. I don't work for any office. I can say anything I want to say. You know, I, I work for God. Honestly. And that's where he was taking me to. So um, I, I left so 2018 2019 i started to feel the nudge where god was telling me it was time to leave church office ah 
Hey, so I'd increased my pay. I had moved in ranks. I think it was very sporadical the way I moved in ranks before I entered in 2016. By 2018, yeah, I was head of human resources by 2018. So it wasn't like it was, I, God was blessing me there and increasing my influence. Of course, there were different challenges and all that, but God was blessing me. I found favor with my boss and everything, but God kept telling me it was time to leave. I didn't listen. I didn't, I didn't answer. I didn't even tell anybody that I was starting to leave. I didn't tell anybody, but of course, a lot of people started to, there were confirmations. People just woke up to me. My friends just said, I feel like you need to leave. Church of Faith, like God is calling you to something higher. But I didn't know what it was. I didn't, and I started to feel less of myself because at this time, my mates were getting to be managers at top companies. They were having their own, you know, they were holding their own. As much as church was paying me, okay. It wasn't as much as what my friends or my cousins or my mates who were working in proper mainstream secular, by, by secular I mean the world, not church. I don't mean sin. You know, they were working in companies and all that, banks, they were top people, you know, buying design and I'm here just managing, I think maybe 75K or 80K at that time, you know. So I didn't want to, I didn't want to leave because it felt like I know this thing, at least I know that my money is increased, my pay is increased every year. I know that I'm in clinical. I know, I know, I know. I, I, there were so many certain things and God was saying, leave it and just follow me. It's time to follow me. I wanted to train you and I've trained you. I, I left. I left the church office and it was like I left and, okay, God, what is it? And then God was silent. <laughs> But I knew that 2020, because I was very burnt out at this time. I'd been working since I was 19. I'd been always working. Holidays, I was working, you know. Even at some point, I was working in 300 level. I was doing proper work, and I was in school. So I was working. I've always been working. So that was the first time I was not going to work. This was 2019, December. I didn't even know 2020 was going to go the way it went. So I already even said I was going to do online service. Like, I just need a gap here year in that sense this was me at 28 it didn't make sense i didn't know where the money was going to come from january went you know i asked her, i took my time i explained it to my mom because you have to understand your parents in the sense that as much as you say oh let me just do what i want to do i had to understand the fact that they want the best for me and there's also the bit of fear like this girl are you your mates are getting married your mates are buying cars your mates, you want to take a gap year so from their perspective, I put myself in their shoes, you know, my dad is quick to understand most of these things because he's also a different kind of person. But my mom, I had to break it down to her. So I, I sent her links about burnout and everything. So she's like, oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, that she had this thing too, but that she didn't even know what it was called. So she, she was supportive of me then. I even told my siblings, like, I didn't even have the strength to fight. I just wanted people to just, this is where I am. And, you know, and I was very vocal about it. I was burnt out, I was burnt out. But all this time, it started to breathe in my head. Number one, you know, I started to tell myself, to you are lazy, it's laziness. And it wasn't laziness. I'm different. Fam, that understanding that, that phenomenon for myself, not because I want to convince another person, for myself, it was powerful. I am a different being. I am actually different. And so, and I, I didn't make myself this way. God made me like this. And God wanted me to serve him fully. Now, if you're not that type of person, it's okay. But I am, right? But because I didn't appreciate it and I didn't know what it was, the enemy took advantage of it. And also because he knew that God wanted to use me for things like this where I'm probably speaking to many of you who can relate with me. I'm speaking to maybe parents who have children like me who are wondering, why is this one just different? You know, I'm causing light to be shed. God is causing light to be shed through my experiences and all that. So God, the enemy knew that and he probably started to be afraid. He didn't probably, he said he was afraid. So this was 2020. There was COVID and everything. I lost, I think. Yeah, somebody died that really affected me and all that. But 2020 was still okay. I started to, I ventured into making snacks, puff puff, zobo, chin chin. I started to do that on the side. Thankfully, my auntie, whose house I was staying at here, we um, gave me free reign in her kitchen. I did everything, zobo. I did 
or just selling i also started to do this youtube interviews and um, what's your girl story which is at this time at the time this will air you would have seen the first um first broadcast of what is your girl story that i've put on youtube that's the one with joshua Bamilu, mike Bamilu. so i started doing that you know i just started exploring everything that could bring money and, and it wasn't about money it was i was looking for a sense of fulfillment i was just i wanted to i'm a doer that's another part i'm a doer i always want to do so when you say i should just sit down and watch ah it's hard because i always want to do so the fact that I didn't find, and I knew, so a couple of people started to send me job um, interviews, started to send me job, uh, what's that stuff now, job offers, you know, announcements and everything. And I would read the job description, you know, operations manager, you know, that, like a doer, admin, I, I really didn't want to do HR because of the paperwork, it just cramp, anything that cramps me, it will cramp me, cramp my talent, cramp my passion, cramp everything. You know, so I just knew, I'm like, what is it? What do I want? So there were times I would sit down myself, so, okay, what do you want to do now? And God would say, I say, wait. I say, rest. I sent, I sent, I will send CVs because at some point people are just like, you're just lazy. You're just lazy. A lot of people said that to me. Like, you're just lazy, just, you're not lazy. You just like good life and everything. You know, and these things started to get to me. Like, am I actually, maybe me too, I'm lazy. God will tell me, as I'm telling my CV, they won't call you for interview. They won't call you. Initially, I will pray over the CV. In the name of Jesus, blah, 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 blah. They won't call you. I won't let you waste your money because you, the little you have now, just, they won't call Just wait. Hmm. This thing I'm saying like this, it was very hard. So 2020 went because of COVID. The pressure was not so much. Um, got married in 2020. 2021, you know. 2020 was, it, I, I wanted to use it to rest, but I couldn't because there were a lot of challenges and battles leading to my wedding our wedding and it drained me if you see my picture it wasn't funny what we went through but finally we got married december 2020 by the grace of god so and then also another thing that happened in 2020 was i had already decided in my mind that i wanted my mom to have a grandchild at 60. trust me this one my mom did not send me i didn't even have the conversation with my mom it was just something i wanted to do I wanted her to have a grandchild by 60 because of course she's 60 so she has friends that are maybe 65 60 you know some of them are even younger than my mom and they have grandchildren and i would just look at i want my mom to, to also have i don't know who sent me that message my dear so when it looked like okay I, she was not going to have a grandchild at, but at least i was going to get married maybe the joy of the the wedding was going to you know and the wedding preparation did not go as planned and I saw, I fell into a different level of self-hate. Like, what are you even good for? You're not working? The wedding that's supposed to bring fulfillment and joy to your mom. She didn't, honestly, I'm saying, I didn't have the conversation with her. She didn't even pressure me. <laughs> I felt like, I felt what, so all of these things were piling. I remember that I just kept saying there's something wrong. A month, my mom's birthday, I finally got a ther therapist. And as I was speaking with the therapist, I was like, first of all, you're very open. You're one of the very open patients I've ever had. As I was talking to her, I myself found the breakthrough. So as I just I said, oh, I think I wanted my mom to have a grandchild at 60. And she's going to be 60 next month. And um, I don't have a good job. I just felt like a failure, Sha. Failure. Your wedding is not going as planned. Failure. Your you, you've not bought your parents' car. Failure. You don't have a great job. Failure. You, you're not bringing money home like that. <sighs> I shall feel bad. Got married 2021, 20, early 2021. Vaginismus 2020. You discovered 2020. Vaginismus 2020. The whole of uh, 2021 up until November. Vaginismus. So that was also that, that was around when I finally cracked was August, uh, and then I discovered okay. Now, there's no more wedding that you can say, oh, I'm planning my wedding. That's why I'm not working. Or that's why I'm not looking for a job and planning is stressful. There's nothing like that. There's also no COVID at this time. Why are you not working? And a lot of people will call. Some My uncle, my uncle will call. Sometimes my mom will just say, please, maybe you should just find something. At this time, I'd already launched my company, um, the Happen Company, where we write, we offer writing as a service. You know, but at the same time, clients were not as... Because the novel 
uh, idea in the sense that not many people even know that you can offer writing as a service so and get paid for it so 2021 you know i remember i got a call one day like i said and someone was like, okay, so what are you doing now? No, 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 you have to be serious with your life. You're not a child anymore. Your husband, I'm sure he has a good job, but you, you need a two-income family. I, these are things I'm already thinking about. My husband and I had major fights about me. Sometimes he wants to talk about how do we do our finances. And I'm like, I can't really talk. It's not my money. And he gets angry. Like, what is it? I, started to, I felt so tiny just because I wasn't bringing money. I can't give my parents as much money. I can't give my anybody that needs money. Sometimes when they come to me like, Tito, please, can you? I can't. And I, and I just felt so horrible. I kept saying, God, let me do anything. Can I just work? Can I just work? And I'm telling you, it's not something that is common when it's like God is just saying, but I'm saying you should wait. And I will go to church sometimes. Whatever you ask for to do, do it well. And the one I really enjoy doing, which is talking, people were not willing to pay. I remember um, church church asked me to anchor an event. That's when I knew that ah, this is my this is this is what I want to do. This talking thing. March my pastor's birthday, twenty fifth and twenty sixth last year. I anchored ministers and leaders forum. It felt like it was tasking, but I enjoyed it. See, they didn't pay me anything. I paid for my makeup. I paid. You know, it felt like I was fishing water. I remember that, that was the hashtag I was using when I posted fishing. What like I enjoyed it, anchoring corporate, anchoring corporate, comparing, talking, talk shows. Ah, man, I love it. But there were no opportunities. It was like the whole people were saturated there. I remember I would check this person's vlog and be like, "This is what I want to do. Where do I start from now, God? Am I not too old? Twenty nine, you know." Still nothing. God just will say, wait. So, that, I'm telling you that all this time I started to feel... Why? Because the society is a performance-based society. When people say, oh, this person is doing well. What are they saying? The person is working in a company and the person is making money. How do you explain that you, a full-fledged woman, who started working, working at a young age, will get to age 28, 29 and say, you are not working because God said are you thinking? That's how I felt. Even before people will come and tell me, even me, I'm already saying. So when people say it, it pains me more. That was like my insecurity the whole of 2020, 2021. Like, you are nothing, Tito. You are nothing. What? Are, okay, show me your proof. And at this time, I had an Instagram page. People were still saying, oh, Tito, I find you. And I was not looking like, what are you inspired by? What, is, uh, 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 what am I doing? What am I doing? I'm not doing anything. What am I known for? I can't even give people money. Somebody cannot be in need now and speak to me and I'll be able to help. That's how I started to see myself. And so 2021, when God told me that I should start a Bible club for children, I'm like, with what? How much? Where would the money come from? Because not only did you tell me to start a Bible club, he also told me that I'll be feeding them every week. Please, from where? With which money? I can't. My husband is like a one-income family. Where am I supposed to get the money from? So that's what precipitated into the thought. That's what led. And I want to speak to anybody because I, I feel like there, there are a lot of us. We may not be common, but God doesn't only have one person like me. I know. I know because a couple of people have reached out to me. Sometimes it's even us creatives. Like, we are stuck. You know 9 to 5 is not your job. You know I know that the rat race is not, even if I was mixed, some people are even in jobs now. Some people, they are the breadwinners. They can't even leave. And they are frustrated. They feel like, I'm not doing what God sent me to do. I can't even, I don't even know my purpose. I don't even know why I was created. I remember after the whole suicidal thing, my team was talking to me and said, Tito, we need to find something for you to do that would pay for the passion that you have. And as he said, God said, I didn't send you there. And I told him. He said, eh, hey, but, you know, and I don't blame him because it doesn't make sense. I honestly don't blame anyone that has looked at me and said, this one is just a low lifer. She's not serious. I don't blame anybody because it does not make any, even to me. So, 
if you've ever looked at me and wondered if I'm okay, I'm not okay with it. <laughs> I've never been okay because I'm a doer. I'm not the kind of wife that doesn't want to bring anything to the table. If my, ask my husband, we've had, he's had to convince me, assure me a lot of times. It's not, it, but I'm still a doer. So the week or those, there are times when maybe I, God knows I need something. He will just give me an opportunity, a speaking opportunity, something, 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 something. Where you, will, you can see the passion with which I go at it. I pay for my makeup artists, even when I'm not paid. In fact, most of the talking jobs I've done, I haven't been paid. Most of. I even spoke with a friend. That, okay, let me be comparing with you and all that. That didn't really work. But I just knew. But one thing I can say. That between 2020 and now, I have never lacked. Yeah. I've never lacked food. I've never lacked water. I've never lacked good clothes. I've never lacked. There are people that will just send me money. Last week, somebody just, I needed that exact amount of money. I don't know if you'll see this. And I kept looking at the name. I don't know this name. I don't know this name. Then she reached out to me just this week and said, the Holy Spirit sent me to you. He said, I should send you this exact... That's how God has been providing for me. Now, what do you do when you find yourself in this situation? Rest. God wants to take care of you. Why are you feeling bad? Why was I feeling bad? Because of what people will say. My parents, God, God gave me amazing parents in the sense that they are not the ones that want to be asking me for money every... In fact, when I send them money, they'll be like, no, no, don't spend, don't, don't, just manage yourself, you know, you and your husband are just starting your lives, you know, but they will thank me, but at the same time, they are not demanding, but I still give, sure, that says, I pay my tithe, I give offering, I sow, when God leads me to sow, so that one is a different ballgame, even from that little, you can still give, right, I give to people the, you know, it's, it's still, it's, that's important, give, from the little you have, still give, Give 1,000 naira to your parents. Don't say God led me. God is always leading you to sow to pastors. He has never led you to sow to your parents before. It never. They should understand. They should understand. Your pastor don't understand. He don't understand. Or she don't understand. Give to your parents. Give to your friends. Give to people that are in need. Even with the fact that you don't have. That's one thing I learned. With my little, I still give. I still give. So that's it. But I just wanted you to see that that's what led me to. So when I it got to a point where I now didn't even have anything. And I was, you know, I had a couple of, I need to pay this thing here and everything. And, and I just said, the devil just said, you are worthless. Look at your life since 2019. No income. No. Da, 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 da. And there's been income. God has been paying. Every month, God has been paying. If you are in this position like me, maybe it is just a gap here for you. Maybe it is you don't you are in between jobs, you don't know what to do, you've tried your best. Rest. Come to the point of rest. There are some of us that it is God that is paying our salary. And it is, you see, God's salary is better. It's better. <laughs> it's better. It's better. Come out of your logic. Forget what people will say. People will always say something. If you are making too much money, they say you are doing that. They say that uh, yeah, uh, internet fraud. It's... People will always talk. A young lady that can afford a car, afford rent in an amazing area, she's, she's sleeping around. People, uh, different people have different experiences. This is just my own. I just wanted to say that that's what led me there. So when I could, I sat down with God and did an analysis. I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, okay. And God doesn't call me. I'm not worthy because of what I do. I'm worthy because he says I'm worthy. The Bible says that revenue is, is better, is higher than gold and my salary than the finest of silver. When God is paying you, when God is paying you, forget it, you are, and it's not, see, don't be lazy in the sense that go ahead and do that little thing that you're doing. If it's your Instagram, maybe God says you should write and you have three likes. Keep writing. 
I've, I've been this thing that I'm doing. I've been doing it. This YouTube. I was just. I just wasn't doing it on YouTube. Ask. Check my my for most of my followers. They know. The reason they probably are not following me yet is because they are used to me. I've been doing this thing. God just said it was time, right? And I enjoy it. Anytime I'm editing my videos, recording my videos, I do it with so much fun, with so much zest. Like, this is what I was actually supposed to do. Like, this is what God wanted me to do, right? It's like, I just hit it, but it has taken process. Now, every other thing I've done, living as if wasted, never. God is not a God of wastage. He's a God of process. Every knowledge I've gleaned, everything I've learned, is this my final bus stop? No. There's still greater ahead. But I thank God for this, where I am now. I'm okay. It's not about money. What I, I can't afford, I will tell people I can't afford it. I should be, this is, I can't afford it. A friend of mine was getting married and I told her, I said, it's I should be the pass because I can't afford it. That I should be. She said, no, 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 just come. Don't put yourself on due pressure. You don't have to buy everything. You don't have to own anything. If your car is taking too much money from you, sell the car and start taking over. I stay at home. You don't have to go out every time. Like, arrange your life in such a way to fit where you are if you are there. Like, explain to your parents. For some parents, it's difficult for them to understand. I understand that maybe you just have to put your foot down, you know, respectfully and say, this is what my parents understood. And I knew the difference between my father and my mother. They're two different people. So I relate to them differently. My dad, all I need to just do is just to say. I'll just tell him. I'll be like, okay. He understands me. My mom, you have to break it down. She's a choleric. You have to break it down. It doesn't make her wrong. It just means that's who she is. And she's my mom. Right? So at some point, she was an authority over my life. She still is. So I have to break it down to, for her to understand. That's just it. Do anything, and for other people, the world, it's not your business, oh. It don't concern you, oh. Whatever anybody wants to think, that's their concern. That's their business. It don't, it don't affect anything. Cut out pressure. God always provides for his own. Don't think about your abilities already. Whatever he tells you to do, do. And take your eyes away from people. Focus. If he tells you to walk on water, just keep looking at it. He has, big, he has bid you come there. Keep going. Don't look at the size of the water. Hey, the dollar is going up. The way I shut down when people are talking about economy. I don't always talk. I don't see anything. Ah, dollar is expensive now. Hey, you look at the exchange rates. Things are going. Where everything is expensive. I don't talk in that kind of conversation because I don't work with this economy. My economy is never. My government is God. Jesus is my president. So I really don't, I can't really say so much. Sometimes I even forget, like I was talking about this foil casting with my mom. She didn't even answer me. After that, she just said, Tito, wherever you see foil, buy it. And I love it because it just reminded me that that's true. I will not lack. And since then, God has been providing foil. Don't stress yourself. Focus on God. So please, I'm telling you, God will take care of you. The, the reason you are pressured is because you are thinking of how it's going to work. You are not as wise as God. And he doesn't make mistakes. And I want to speak to parents or caregivers or authorities of, this, of people like me. Understand with us, we are different. We are different. But God will reward you and reward us. Trust. Just believe about that. I hope that somehow, in some way, you have been blessed and you have been freed. Do not get to the point where, even if it's not suicide, you are so depressed, you begin to think less of yourself. Always believe what God says about you. How would you know? Read your Bible, listen to sermon, and believe it. Don't doubt it. Just believe that God loves you. He thinks you are worthy. He thinks you are flawless. And you are because he says that you are. Have a fantastic week. God bless you.